Good morning. This is the Eager Beaver Show. You are listening to a True North Eager Beaver Media Incorporated podcast. The True North Eager Beaver podcasts are proudly brought to you by our founding sponsors, The Misfy Mysteries from Corvid Moon Publishing, your source for science fiction, fantasy, and cozy mysteries featuring a broad diversity of characters, CanadianTarot.com, your uniquely Canadian online eclectic tarot community, and The Peppermaster, hot pepper sauces made from farm-fresh ingredients to thrill your taste buds and expand your mind. Well, good morning and hello, kids, and welcome to season three and episode number 317 of the Daily Beaver Morning Show here on the Cryo Media Network. Putting a little love into it today. <laughs> oh, right. It's, it's corporate capitalist um, greeting card holiday day. Yes, it is. And I don't care. Take, shut up and take my money. It's bad love. <laughs> I, I, I express my love for my lovely, beautiful partner every day. So do I. Every day should be VD. I mean, Valentine's Day. Um, so, <laughs> <laughs> happy VD, everybody. Happy VD. <laughs> See you next time. <laughs> and that's our show today. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, you got the kids loving your background asking if you're on Jeopardy. <laughs> mm, just, I'll, I'll have some fun with it there. I got a couple of different ones here. I was playing right. with this is the what the stu this is what it looks like this is what i i see in front of me well you you're very angelic bit, but you know that's uh, you look like universe. you have a little halo i got a halo so maybe or a I'll saint thing mm. <laughs> it looks it looks more like uh where is it yeah, where is it going? Yeah. there we go that's there's the widescreen shot but it's too small so anyway um, uh, i'll go back to <laughs> I, I downloaded one but it, it didn't work out right how about this one this one's cool yeah downtown Ooh. Toronto. i've got a downtown ottawa one i gotta load in and i don't know have you i'm not i don't even know what that is so i'm not going to put it up it says <laughs> the back <laughs> the background says have you been pranked by the huge penis guy i don't, I don't know what I'm not putting it up for fear if we might get shut down by YouTube. <laughs> Please. Eee. Yeah. Oh, my word. Uh, people were also asking if you were about to be beamed up. <laughs> uh, today, recording day, as you can tell, is Wednesday, February 14th, Valentine's Day. And I got my annual Valentine's Day shirt on. So, yes, if you want to come in for a cuddle today, come right on in. I've got plenty to give. <laughs> and there's plenty more where it came from. I love to snuggle. Um, yes, I'm your host, the eager beaver pronouns, he, him, hey, Mr. Beaver A. And as you can hear with me, as always, is my good friend, Mr. Grizzly. A big loving thank you goes to our podcast founding sponsors, The Pepper Master, mwah, The Misfy Mysteries from Corvin Moon Publishing, mwah, mwah, and CanadianTarot.com, mwah, mwah, mwah. Thanks for all the love and the support uh, from day one. Mm, so, yes, 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 from day one. Well, even from before day one, technically. That's correct, yes. Yeah, before we even went on air. All right, and let's see, We I guess we have a nibble for you. But before we do that, let's ask Mr. Grizzly, how's your mental health doing today, sir? You know, uh, 
I got to be honest with you. I think it's pretty good. Um, I'm, I'm right. not fully awake yet. Um, I I just uh, I I had a rough night. I got home, had some dinner, and then had a raging migraine. Ooh, just a brutal migraine, and uh, kind of destroyed my whole evening because I had planned on on doing some edits to the most recent shows, and yeah, that that, that didn't work out because I just I couldn't look at a computer screen. So Jeez. I spent the night on the couch with an ice bag on my head and crawled into bed at some point and tossed and turned throughout the night and woke up feeling almost human. So, you know, I think, I think I'm, I think I'm doing okay today. There's the background oh. I created in AI. Uh-huh. Very nice. Yeah, it's an AI thing. So, uh-huh. yeah. Mm-hmm. So yes, um, well, I'm glad you're feeling better today. Um, Thanks. I'm feeling good. I have to say, yesterday, in the evenings, I'm very, very, very tired Mm -hmm. because I'm having very long days and pretty busy days and much busier than my usual days. Um, So, yeah, I've I've been going to bed early, which has been good, and I have been sleeping well, which is good. But, yeah, uh, indeed, I'm uh, come the evening, I'm a little pooped, I have to say. Yeah, it's, I've been feeling a lot of that lately too. And then you couple that with a migraine and it just, it, you know, um, mm-hmm. I had plans. I had things like design, design, design. <laughs> I had plans to get things done. A list of chores uh, along with some edits and along with, you know, some production work. And unfortunately, uh, nature didn't allow it. Mm. All right, kids, let's get to the stuff. Um, Once again, uh, I don't know if this is round four or round five now. I don't know. But it seems that PP is committed to his bit uh, with attacking journalists. We'll have another clip of that for you. I don't know if you have it uh, lined up. I'm working on it right now. Okay. Um. I don't know what to do with this now because it's how we put we seem to be in a struggle here or a tug of war for who's going to win out and the thing is is that keep on complaining that he's doing this clearly is not going to change his behavior no because he's been embarrassed and humiliated several times and he's still committed to the bit. He would rather look foolish like this and look like a dick like this uh, than to actually answer the question. Um, And repeatedly pointing out other guy bad, other guy not fair, doesn't win an election. Right? I mean, you can keep on pointing out you know, you can be the opposition, well, not the opposition, but the government, or even the opposition, the New Democrats, if they were cared to actually take a strip off the conservatives every now and then, um, and point to that and say, you know, this is not good for democracy, but uh, PP is definitely on a campaign to normalize this behavior. Well, it's something that Rachel Gilmore pointed out, that since his uh, viral apple-eating incident, where he got one over on the reporter who was not... Well, he runs a small newspaper, correct? Right. And it's a farmer, I believe a farmer who runs a small newspaper and wasn't fully prepared when he says, well, you know, uh, you've taken pages from their book. What page? What page? Give me the page. So that went successful and viral for him and he was featured on Fox News and CNN, I think, amongst others. And, and Rachel Gilmore pointed it out saying he's just trying to reproduce that. But the thing is, it's backfiring on him because people are coming now with facts and they're prepared when they ask him a question. They're prepared for him to ask them a question, which is not how it's supposed to freaking work. Well, that's what I'm saying. Or as I said earlier, he's teach, te- treating media availabilities as a debate opportunity. He wants to debate the press. That's so not- this is clearly a strategy. Yeah, I know it does nothing for us, but clearly he wants to debate the press. Mm-hmm. He doesn't want to debate his actual opponents, but he wants to debate the press. Oh, he'll run away from an actual debate with his opponents. Yes. Because he's a freaking coward. Yes. He'll pay the $50,000 fine. But the point here is that he wants to debate the press. Mm -hmm. 
He believes that this is a good look. He's taking on the press. He's asking questions. He's being petulant. He's trying to flip the tables. The press can turn around and say, hey, 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 we ask questions of you. I said, but don't I get to ask a question? And then has other people, yeah, it's so unfair. Doesn't he get to ask a question? I mean, the media is so un- I guess you have a whole bunch of people. Apparently, the play right now is, goes, well, she kept on interrupting him. Yeah, because this is now round five. And when he sees he's going down that path, this and they're there, well, she should have let him answer the question. So she should have let him take two to three, four minutes to spew everything, politely listen, not interrupt, commit stenography rather than journalism. Because you could ask the question later. No, you can't because he's limiting people to five. He's limiting, limiting the whole press pool to five questions. Yeah. Yes. And some of them don't you barely get a follow up. Well, and, and he so gives you bullshit but, answers. But that's what I mean. So that can only only apply if you have unlimited questions mm-hmm. and unlimited time. So, I, hey, I'm just going to stay here and keep on asking the same question for the next five hours till I get an answer, until you run out of this stuff or you get bored of this. But that's not how it works. They got five questions. Yeah. So you see, so some people are saying, oh, well, she kept on interrupting. So you're supposed to ask the question. You're supposed to let him spew his bullshit for four minutes, and then you're supposed to what? Ask the question again, and he spews his bullshit, and he does that five times, and then he walks away? Yeah. It, on answer, you know, he'll just say whatever he wants. Lie to our faces. Like I get to choose the answer I give. Yeah. Right? Because it's, but you're still left without an answer to the damn question. At some point, a journalist or, pa- or an anchor or you know, a panel moderator has to seize control of their interview. When you see somebody is not going to be answering your question, mm-hmm. there's nothing wrong with stopping. Now, maybe somebody needs to ask him precisely. Mr. Polyev, without attacking the media and without talking about anybody else except your party, what do you think? <laughs> or something. Um, but he's committed to this bit and he believes that him debating the press is good for him. Well, At least with polling his numbers would reflect it that it is so. And the more he does it, the more he normalizes the behavior. Mm-hmm. So we're going to get used to it. Just like Trump, we got used to Trump basically accusing everyone. I mean, he's now at the point, right, where somebody's asking, he has media's asking questions of what, what media outlet are you again? What media outlet are you? Like, like that's relevant. Well, it's just, it, so do, it doesn't matter. Him. It, he it just wants to pick on them. And, it, and you're right. And, and most people, most reporters will identify themselves, say, so-and-so from whatever news agency, but he needs to know right away so he can hit them with uh, your, yes, your or he pretends, Or he pretends he doesn't hear and gets them said, oh, and then of course, oh, well, CP. Yeah. yeah. Like this. He seems, to ha- he seems to hate CP more than he actually hates the CBC now. Which is strange, right? Because CP is a newswire that's been around for, what, 110 or 120 years or yeah. something like that? And I'm, he keeps on saying that CP receives government funding, and I'm not sure if that's the case. I think that CP receives funding from all the media outlets. All the media outlets. To keep it going. I'm not sure if it receives direct public funding. And CP, because it's a press wire, is the one that actually delivers first most facts. Mm-hmm. Yes. They're not, they don't editorialize. And commentary. Yeah. yeah. So, and of course, this man is allergic to facts. So, and doesn't like ones that are particularly inconvenient. So I can see why he's particularly attacking CP. Mm. I, have the, um, I have the clip of his petulance. Yes. Oh. Let, let's play it. This is just, if you have not seen this yet, oh, be prepared to be angry, exasperated, and probably screaming at the screen. Bring it home. Why did your party want to grant over a hundred million dollars in regulatory relief to the mainstream media? We don't want to give uh, any tax dollars to the mainstream media. We, our belief is that the mainstream media you and all. Decision, then? Uh, your party's decision no. to grant regulatory okay. relief. So I'll, I'll answer your question. Uh, the media that is bought and paid for. Which, where are you from, by the way? Which which outlet are you in? Which outlet? Which outlet? Canadian Press. Ah, okay. Canadian Press. So you're talking about tax dollars for media. Is, isn't CBC your biggest... Gra- isn't, no, I, I can answer. Yeah, any, you want an answer? Why want to grant want? $100 million in Sorry. regulatory relief to the mainstream media? When would you like me to respond? Okay. Good. Okay, great. So, of course, you are a tax-funded media outlet. 
and uh, spreading Justin Trudeau's message. Why did you and, 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 and so you're, you're, you're interrupting me again. Why you're interrupting me again. I am answering the question. Do you regret yeah, granting $100 million in regulatory relief to the mainstream media? Including your question Bell? is false. So if you can allow me to correct your falsehoods, then we can, we can answer the question directly. So, false. Canadian Conservatives do not believe in giving tax dollars to media outlets. That's Justin Trudeau. That's Justin Trudeau. That's Justin Trudeau. Okay, if you, if you don't want me to answer the question, I'll move on to someone else. You're, you're a tax-funded you're a tax -funded mouthpiece to the PMO. That's the reality. So, question answered. You I'm trying to. I'm trying to, but you're heckling. Are you going to let me answer the question, or are you just going to heckle on behalf of Justin Trudeau? How many times did he say Justin Trudeau? So our, our party does not support tax dollars for media outlets because that's when we end up with biased media like you who come here and articulate the PMO talking points rather than uh, delivering uh, real news to the Canadian people. Justin Trudeau gave Bell Media and other media tax dollars supposedly to protect media jobs. And then what happened? They all got laid off. So that, so that the supposed justification for giving, for giving Bell all this money was that it was going to save media jobs. Well, they all got fired. So I guess that wasn't the real reason for giving tax dollars to the media. The real reason was for him to buy support from the media, which is what it actually did. So we believe that media should be driven by readership, viewership, and listenership. And that's what allows it to, to represent the Canadian people, rather than taking marching orders from the PMO. Like, <laughs> what did he say, Justin Trudeau, six times in two and a half minutes? Yeah. So, here the question was about his party actually having introduced the amendment in committee. So when we were talking on Monday, right, we were talking about him and Jagmeet Singh blaming the Prime Minister for the $40 million that went to Bell. And Pascal saint ange the Minister of Heritage, said that that was a lie, that that was all Pierre Polyev. It was his party that suggested the amendment and that the Liberals voted against it. And on the show, we said, wouldn't it be a kick in the teeth because conservatives didn't do this alone, mm -hmm. if the NDP had helped that pass. And again, I don't know if someone is listening to the show, but from Canadian press, which is probably why he attacked them, there was an article, Conservative Motion, backed by NDP, produced $40 million in regulatory relief for Bell. Conservative leader Pierre Polyev is rejecting the idea that his party played a role in granting $40 million in regulatory relief to Bell Media. Conservative and NDP MPs, backed by a 2022 amendment to the Online Streaming Act opposed by the governing Liberals that allowed Canada's private broadcasters to save about $120 million a year in regulatory fees. So, they backed $120 million mm -hmm. of regulatory fee waivers, $40 million of which went to Bell. Bell's share of those savings were $40 million. The precise total of annual operating losses the broadcaster's parent, BCE Incorporated, cited when it slashed 4,800 4, jobs last week. But Polyev is now blaming Justin Trudeau for those cuts and has called on the Prime Minister to claw back some of his government's federal grants to media companies. When asked about the disconnect, the Conservative leader would only say that providing tax dollars to media outlets fuels biased, liberal-friendly coverage. The June 2022 motion introduced by Conservative MP John Nature, or Natter, passed with the support of New Democrat and Bloc Québécois MPs on the House of Commons Heritage Committee without debate. Yeah. The motion sought to amend the Liberals' update to the broadcasting law, the Online Streaming Act, so that it would abolish certain licensing fees. Liberal MPs on the committee voted against Nature's motion, but the amendment was nonetheless written into the bill. The act ultimately came into effect last April. In the late-day statement to the Canadian Press Conservative spokesman Sebastian Skamsky called the amendment a common-sense proposal to level the playing field between traditional broadcasters and online streaming platforms. When asked to explain why New Democrat MPs voted with the Conservatives, NDP leader Jagmeet Singh would only say that his party is opposed to government largesse for big corporations. I can tell you 
We have long said that any money that goes to any corporation should come with some strings attached saying said. We have said that again and again and again, but it was passed without debate. Or they could have talked about strings attached. <sighs> I'm... He, he lied right to our faces. They called him out on the lie, and he doubled down. And this is People the reason... People want this guy to be the prime minister? And that's the reason for the entire Song and Dance Act. Yeah. Because he was asked about his party actually putting it. So, and he's, and he's twisting it, saying, like, we don't support government funding of media. That wasn't the question. The question wasn't, do you support government funding of media? The question was, if you don't support government funding of media, and if this is all Trudeau's fault, that's the implied part of the sentence, which probably mm -hmm. should now be said explicitly. Why did you even push forward the amendment? Oh, well, we ne needed to level the playing field. It's, none of this makes sense. And then the New Democrat says they're against the largesse. Now, when it came time to vote in the House, the conservatives didn't vote on the bill, even though they got that amendment. So they forced the amendment into the bill, got what they wanted at the time, and then didn't vote for the bill, mm -hmm. which sets the stage for this. It blows up. The New Democrats put it in to the bill at committee stage and did vote for the bill, as did the Bloc Québécois. So I'm sitting here and I'm wondering, since we know who these people are. Why is it that none of those people who were sitting on that committee who voted to put that amendment into it have gone to the press or have gone to their leaders and said, um, um, yeah, we did do that. You're actually lying to the people. <laughs> Or you're actually being inaccurate. Like you, you need to correct that record. Now, Mr. Grizzly, if you would, one of the things, one of the things about this ourcommons.ca website is that they'll tell you who the committees are, members are, for various committees, and you can look at them. Mm -hmm. As the membership changes, they have it historically. Um, right, so you can just tag the date and time, and it'll show you who was on the committee the day that uh, vote passed. Sorry, I don't know why the pull down. Oh, it's funny. The pull down menu doesn't show up on your screen, but it does on mine. Oh, yeah. Okay. This is the Standing Committee on Canadian Heritage. I'll just blow this up a little bit here. So right here, Standing Committee on Canadian Heritage. The chair is Hetty Fry from the Liberals. The vice chair is John Nader, conservative, the guy who proposed it. Mm -hmm. The vice chair of the committee proposed it. That's right. Martin Champoux from the Bloc Québécois, who supported it. And the members of the committee at the time from the Liberals, you had Chris Brittle, Michael Coteau, Lisa Hepfner, Anthony Housefather, and Tim Lewis, who voted against it. Peter Julian, a man who's not afraid to talk to the media, mm -hmm. voted for it. He's not contradicting his leader. Given the choice between tapping his leader on the shoulder or showing up on some media somewhere and saying, no, no, Canadians, we actually did do this, mm -hmm. or staying, staying silent, he's chosen to stay silent. That's curious behavior. And then from the conservatives, we have, of course, Rachel Thomas, mm -hmm. of course, Tim Upel, and some guy named Kevin Waugh. None of them. have tapped their leader on the shoulder and said, uh, no, we actually did propose this. None we of them have that. gone to the media to be straight with Canadians. They're allowing the lie to stand. And for all of those people that are out there saying, oh, well, stuff like this. Well, to me, it seems like the journalist didn't want to hear the answer and repeatedly interrupt him. This happens when you've already picked your narrative. Or, 
How can he answer a question when the journalist keeps interrupting him? She is not a journalist, just a screaming ma home for the liberals. So it seems like the game now is pretending that he was actually trying to answer the question. You all saw what he did. There was no attempt to answer that question. There's an attempt to sanctimoniously say, we don't support giving money. But you guys pushed the amendment, just like the NDP says, we don't support largesse for big corporations, but you do. But you did. And apparently this type of government funding bought the media. So, But apparently government funding that helps to support the media means you bought the media, but government funding that helps support big oil doesn't mean you bought big oil or big pharma or big insurance, or big banks, or the defense industry, or all the places that conservatives love to throw our money. And apparently he keeps on saying that these media outlets are the mouthpiece of the government. Don't know why none of them are suing him for defamation yet. Because no, that's, that's that goes to the core of immediate media's credibility. Mm -hmm. That's a good question. I wonder if anybody has investigated that or, or spoken to a lawyer about that and said, you know what? Because <laughs> he, well, he just defamed them yesterday. Point blank. Lied directly to them and said, you're a mouthpiece for, the, for Justin Trudeau. <sighs> Never in my life have I seen a politician in this country behave in that manner. Ever. Ever. And, then, and he's been there 20 years. Yeah. And then, I wish I had it handy, but I don't. But if you're on the, on the web, there's a graphic that circulates fairly regularly that states all the newspapers in Canada. Mm -hmm. And for the past several elections, which party the editorial board of that newspaper recommended Canadians vote for? Conservative, I think 78 or 80% of the time. Every damn election. But they're the mouthpiece of the Liberal Party. We're supposed to believe. <sighs> it's exhausting, it's tiring, it's a lie, it's a shtick, it's an act, and clearly he's not going to drop it. So there needs to be some new strategy. Yeah, yes, journalists need to ask better questions. I'm not sure how you know, journalists can ask these questions without anticipating where he's going to go with the answer. And if they're not supposed to say, no, no, that's not the question, this is the question. And yes, he snarks at them, and then sometimes they snark back, and sometimes snark is not called for, but I mean... the disrespect for the profession. I mean, there's only so long that you, you take the high road. Of course, that doesn't help though, because it brings him down onto his territory. So I do not know what the strategy is at this point. Exactly. Kid James says, as soon as they whine, he wins, because we're dealing in an overall context here. As Everett Scrimshaw pointed out in a recent uh, opinion piece, we're only about 24% of the Canadian public actually believe or trust or see value in the media that way. So well, the argument that he's being mean to the media is not going to gain any sympathy whatsoever. No, no. And, and here, here, here's the best part. Here, look at this. This is the record. Canadian newspaper federal election endorsement oh, it. ownership from 1980 to 2021. Toronto Star has been mostly liberal with one NDP, has been all liberal with one NDP in 2011. Globe and Mail, three times they endorsed the liberals. Every other time, with the exception of 2019 and 2021, where there was no endorsement, conservative. National Post is, uh, well, Canadian Alliance, which is conservative, and then conservative every single time since they started in 2000. Toronto Sun. With the exception of 2000, which was a mixed endorsement, everything was conservative. Vancouver's son, two liberal endorsements in uh, 93 and 97, and the rest are all conservative. 
these are this is this is newspapers across the country and who they've endorsed over the last well 44 years the last election was 2021 and if you're looking since 2006 on there's literally eight times eight papers out of all Mm -hmm. the ones listed since 2006 that have recommended liberals everything else has been conservative or or no recommendation in one ndp yeah from 2006 one to looking from 2006 on. well four newspapers four publications four like publications the, only yeah, toronto star hamilton spectator the waterloo region record and la presse that's it so when they say you know canadian media is owned by uh, the liberals uh no it's not <laughs> like not at all not even close the record would say otherwise you need to send me that visual because i'd been looking for it and i hadn't seen it yeah, I'll send, a, I'll send you the link. So, yes, the journalist James says the option to word is to word your questions better, not sound all hysterical while asking those questions. That is true. Mm-hmm. I think they're just but, so fed up that they're just, you know. But that's not going to change his behavior. No, it's not. No matter what you ask him, he's going to lie to your face. No matter how pretty liar. or kind or well you ask him, he's like this. He's he's going to twerk. Because he does not want any video. What's just like he didn't want any video or anything on paper of him stating that he denounced those three conservative MPs for having brunch with Christine Anderson. There's been no official release from his uh, from his office. Yes, he wants no visual and nothing on paper of him mm-hmm. admitting that his party did actually advance that amendment. Let us and he will there. do and say anything and behave in any way to prevent that. If I, um, if I could take a day to go up there as a member of Cryer Media representing True North Eager Beaver and ask a question, I would not be nice. That's not, no, you're not answering the question I asked you. You're not answering the question I asked you. You're making something up. Stop lying to us. They would escort me out pretty quickly. And I would say, hey, what, what about freedom of the press? He's lying to our faces. We need to hold his feet to the fire on this. Tell us the truth. That's all we want. The truth. Yep. And he would ignore that anyway. Yeah, of course he would. He would smile, he would smirk, and then he would clip that, and then they would circulate it to his bunch and fundraise off it. Yeah. Debating the press for his base is a good look Mm -hmm. because they cheer him on every time he does it it pisses me off to no end like and and the thing is was it the other day when they when they pressed him on answering about whether he supported daniel smith or not and one of the reporters said no 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 we're the journalists we ask you the questions you don't ask us the questions this is democracy I was like, it's about bloody time somebody did that. Why have they been waiting so long? Mm-hmm. But then you said, well, don't I get the right to ask a question? A clarification? That's what the question period's for. <laughs> yeah, really. But, I mean, the, the clarification if the, you know, the question's difficult to understand or something. But other than that, no. But clearly... This is a campaign to discredit the media and to normalize this behavior so that we don't trust anything that media has to say. Absolutely. It's like when Donald Trump was asked, why are you so hard with the media? It's like, I need to bash them at every turn so that when they do finally do come up with something true, nobody will believe them. He actually said it out loud. This, this is the playbook. This is right out of Goebbels' playbook. This is what the Nazis did. You can call me an alarmist if you want, but this is historical fact. This is what they did. Yes. He also has another problem, though, going on. And I made the comment on my Twitter feed, but I hadn't made it on the show. What was that? When he had that incident with the media where he was asking about his trans policy and he did relent finally and said that he did support. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. No Maybe puberty blockers. For those over 18. <laughs> yes, for people who are actually in puberty, that he supported them only for people who have gone through puberty. Um. <laughs> In that moment, there was a shift. And in that moment, he went from becoming 
from being the leader of the conservative movement in Canada to handing that to Danielle Smith. Oh, yeah. Yeah. She's his boss now. Mm -hmm. Clearly. And it seems I'm not the only one that picked up on that. Mr. Grizzly, if you would, our good friend Theo Mudakis. You got to blow that up. I shall call him Mini Me. <laughs> Click on something and there it goes. Gender identity policy. Yeah. For those of you listening at home, it is a Theo Modakis cartoon with uh, Daniel Smith standing behind a uh, diminutive Pierre Polyev, and they're both dressed in gray suits, just like uh, the character from the Austin Powers film, Dr. Evil. And his mini-me. They got the little finger up. Mm-hmm. The pinky finger as they, they put it in their mouth. Yeah. yeah. So um, it seems that the conservatives also felt that shift in that moment, and therefore he needs to be even more pugilistic. Mm -hmm. No, no, I'm the real boss. You're not, buddy. Use he does it better than you do. Well, it, you know, his polling numbers keep going up, keep going up, keep going up. For some reason, I don't understand it, but whatever, whatever. Remember when I said 2024 was the year of pushback? We're witnessing it in real time because people are sick and tired of being sick and tired. And they're pushing back. And it's starting with reporters asking him a question and staying on the question that's not that's not an answer that's not a, your why did you do this why did you do this why did you do that's how he treats them that's how he treats everybody so treat him the same damn way yes or no yes or no just a number yes or no yes or give no me the page how much give me the page give me the page give me the page yeah that's not an answer that's not an answer you're avoiding the question you're torquing that's not what we asked nope Try again. Keep on him. Keep on him. He'll crack eventually. Because here's the thing. His skin is so thin. It's so paper thin. He can't handle the pressure. Could you imagine if he had to go up against Xi? Yeah. Or Putin? Or please, I hope this isn't the case, but Trump? Yeah. He would just bend over for them. Yeah. Oh, yeah, he would. So as Evan Scrimshaw said in his uh, latest piece, Pierre Polyev had another of his traditionally testy scrums with the press this week, and now liberal cabinet ministers are trying to make respect for the press to dividing line. And I just have to ask, do you get your polling at 24%? Nobody views the press with reverence they did 50 years ago. You know how I know it? You're reading the site something that would not exist in the old days of concentrated media where independent voices were distrusted because the mainstream media was the only media that you've gone out of your way to find an external source of commentary shows that the traditional media is flawed. The policy problems this government faces are strong, and that has to be the message they lead with. Pia Paliev is odious for any number of reasons, but voters have plainly tipped past the point where they care much about the opposition. Polyev's ratings are a function of discontent with Trudeau. If the Liberals spent $10 million right now on ads attacking Polyev, would they gain any in, 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 Sorry, would they gain any in the polls? Sure. Would they gain enough to justify it? No. So, he continues to say, there's a lot ministers can do to help create useful dividing lines against Polyev that can pay off contingent in the economy getting better. Isn't he so mean? Isn't one of them? You want some dividing lines that are going to work better for you? Launch a quick and dirty revamp into the CBC. Remit, fire Catherine Tate, give her successor a 40% pay cut, and ban all bonus by legislation for 10 years. Use, it, use the new remit to reverse the cuts to local news and quietly bow out of things that aren't needed. Beyond my specific ideas, the government does a lot of things and then refuses to sell them properly. They sell them as abstract context, concepts, as opposed to selling the fact that specific, typical suburban parents are saving $900 a month on childcare. That's a tangible thing that's very easy to sell. Vagaries about the role of the free press put people to sleep. I hate to say it, but he's right. Yeah. And as James is saying here, the right question, why did you fight for that amendment and then vote against the bill? But 
But he's never going to admit. No, of course he wouldn't. That they fought for the amendment. But yeah, again, James, you're right. Reporters need to ask questions like Tom Mulcair in question period. You need to ask them cross-examination style, like you're in a court of law. Yes. Because you can't assume good faith of the person to whom you're asking the question. That's where all the people are sitting there going like this. Oh, she's interrupting. If you only let him answer the answer. He has been identified as being not of good faith. And that if you ask him a question, you will not get a good faith answer. So they're trying to control their interview. And I said, when I say control the interview, they only get one question, possibly a small, a short follow-up. But that's all the time they get. Well, None of this behavior that Pierre is exhibiting actually gets us an answer. This is here from Cassie Lake. You can see the voting public push back. Look at what happened here in Manitoba. Then the PCs had to pause their plan to put Candace Bergen in as, P as PC leader. I think the silent majority will push back hard. Yes, the polls say Polyev is the next PM. And yes... We are getting what is known as leader fatigue because he's been there since 2015. So there's a very good chance that uh, the conservatives could win a very slim majority in the next election because people are pissed off. But I think that will only happen is if people don't vote, in all honesty. Mm -hmm. And Evan says in his uh, piece later on, I used to think his ability to get through a press conference would hurt him, but I was wrong. The answer to that is not to be mad that Canadians do not care about Polyev's tone at a time when everything is crumbling around them, but to accept that fact and fucking adjust to it. Mm. Liberals have an opportunity, if only because the NDP have decided to ride and die with the complete incompetent as their leader. Is Polyev sloganeering and simplistic? Of course he is. You know that he didn't save Julia Gillard. You know what didn't save Julia Gillard when Tony Abbott did the same fucking thing? This is from Australia. Mm. Pointing that out. <laughs> Governments that solely exist to point out that the opposition is bad get destroyed. Anthony Albanese backtracked on a major campaign promise in the first part of this year, and yet he took the country with them because he turned that supported liability, breaking a promise, into a victory, turning scheduled top-rate tax cuts into a broader base tax cut by pointing out just how much more regular Joe Aussie would get under him. You know what Albo didn't do? A sermon at the National Press Club about generational unfairness or whatever else. He made this a simple matter of retail politics and the public is responding. The liberals right now seem to be addicted to fighting issues that the public doesn't care about in ways the public won't listen to. It'd be hilarious if it wasn't a political party I desperately want to win. Quebec has seen a right-wing government essentially collapse in the polls in the last 16 months. We showed data to that effect on Monday. The Ford government is shakier than Scotty Scheffler's, Scheffler's putting, and Danielle Smith is addicted to dumbassery, but the feds feel lifeless. Things are not good enough now, no matter how many morons in my mentions pretend that everything is fine. Liberals can either find a new message that centers real Canadians on and how their policies help them, or they can rot in opposition. At this point, it's really up to them. All I can ask is that they understand that their current path isn't helping. So, yeah. There's going to need to be uh, another tactic. Because he's not going to stop this. This is working for him. He'll just keep on it. He'll keep on message, keep hammering it home. And unless reporters continue to hammer him back. But they need change. better questions, more precise. You need to preempt the move within the question without saying Justin Trudeau. <laughs> Would you... <laughs> Right. Is that even possible? Without attacking the media, can you answer this question? You know, so, um, yeah, I'm not. Our press is too meek. And it's not well enough prepared. Agreed. For these sessions. So they're going to have to strategize a bit better. Uh, but yes, the government pointing out that he's mean or not answering the questions or, you know, not being nice is not the path either. They're going to have to actually like take all those housing announcements and say, boom, we've done this. They're going to actually have to take their daycare announcement and say, this is how much that we're saving you. They're going to have to take their climate change policy. Like this and you know, compare your gas bill to your insurance. 
they're going to have to make these cases. They're going to have to make them in stark numbers. Indeed. Because there's, they, need, they need to talk money. Mm. And they need to talk what, what changes we are putting in your life. See that thing about your life that you like? We did that. Well, and let's not forget the other thing they need to talk about is every time he says he's going to cut taxes, they need to reflect and say, yes, he is going to cut taxes. And yes, you will have a little bit more money in your pocket tax-wise. But when he cuts your health care services and privatizes it and you have to pay to see a doctor and he cuts your $10 a day child care, and he cuts the dental care that we're currently bringing in, and you have to pay more money for that because that is all funded by tax dollars, you will have a lot less money in your pocket. Sure, there's a couple more bucks on your paycheck when you look at your taxes that have been cut from uh, or uh, drawn from your check. Sure, your CPP and EI will still be there unless he cuts those. In which case, congratulations, you have 100% of your pay. And now you have to pay for every damn service at usury fees, which you don't want. The guy's a libertarian. And I'm going to pivot a little bit here. But I'm going to stay on, on point when it comes to the way they approach things. Did you see this clip when Marcy Ian stood up in the house the other day? I probably did not know. Okay, it's 29 seconds. Watch what happens when she tries to address the House of Commons. I see the Minister for Women and Gender Equality rising on a point of order. So then I, I hear colleagues, colleagues, order please. So let me just change the graphic here so you can see it a little bit better. Pause to read. That, ha that the House affirms that reproductive and sexual rights are human rights. Two, recognizes that the right to safe and legal reproductive and sexual care is the right to health care. Three, condemns any effort to limit or remove sexual and reproductive rights from Canadians. And four, emphasizes the importance of protecting and expanding access to reproductive and sexual health care, including abortions and contraceptives. This is what she was trying to read in the House. And this is, you know, their response. I see the Minister for Women and Gender Equality rising on a point of order. Uh, pay attention again. <laughs> so then I, I hear colleagues, colleagues, order please. So this is, this is what she was trying to read in, into the Hansard and, and they're yelling no. Your reproductive rights are next. Women, you want an abortion? You want contraception? No, they're going to take it away from you. This is how they treat women. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. And, and that, that was a colleague, a member of parliament. Yep. This is how they treat her. Oh, yep. did it? Maybe I should add the little caveat. This is how they treat a black woman during Black History Month, when she's trying to speak about gender inequality. Meridate on that for a little bit. Yep. Yeah. As Kit Ladam says, she didn't even get one word out before those pieces of shit started. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, jeez. I've got a, a clip of a Heritage Minister Pascal saint ange answering a question, oh. answering it well. Mm-hmm doing the job very well. But again, is this going to matter? Well, uh, you know, I term it as shots fired. Uh, no more Mr. Nice Guy. Yes. The liberals but, are, you know, they're, they're fighting back with, but, you know, fighting fire with fire. But will it matter? Will it matter? I don't know. It's October, October 2025 20, is when it all gets determined. You know, the preset election day set in 2007 by Stephen Harper's government. Yeah. Let's watch. That's, that's Shall we good. watch? Yes. Let's watch. This is, uh, 50 seconds and i love her for this so i just want to get back uh, on the altercation between pierre poiliev yesterday and a journalist from canadian press 
Uh, first of all, I want to say that he's pretty thin-skinned. Uh, it's our job when we're politicians to answer questions from journalists. We're accountable to the Canadian population, and it's the journalist's job to ask those questions. Some questions are difficult. Some questions are easy. Yesterday's question was pretty easy. Uh, he was just asked to explain why his party introduced an amendment to lift fees for uh, Canadian broadcasters. It's a pretty easy question. So it's, it's his party that brought that forward. So yes, when you're a politician, you need to answer questions. And when you're attacking the press, when you're attacking our free press, you're also attacking democracy. It's unworthy of a leader. So I just She's right. She's damn right. But does it matter? I don't know. That's the question. At this point, is, it, is being right enough? It should be. Should be. It should be enough. But is it? No, no. And maybe there is something, as Kitlin M says, they need to do this after every one of Skippy's press debacles. Maybe doing that systematically and giving mm -hmm. that to cover, maybe give maybe that's what the media will choose. You know, if you don't give them anything else to choose from except for that to put up as a clip, then that's well. This is what the Reform Party's been doing for the last few years: is just keep hammering home the same damn thing. All he, oh, look in, in a two and a half minute clip, Pierre Polyev said Justin Trudeau's name seven times, seven times. On a, on a question that had nothing to do with the Prime Minister and everything to do with an amendment that they voted on, that his party, in support with the NDP and the Bloc, voted for. So... <laughs> yeah. Justin Trudeau lives rent-free in Pierre Polyev's head, clearly. Yes. Clearly. In other... Um news you've got the ndp leader who also needs to uh be pivoting mm -hmm. because nobody started asking him like they're asking polyev but somebody's gonna have to start asking him too as well if Agreed. you don't support this largest why did you include it as an amendment and vote for it mm -hmm. in the house of commons but now you're walking away from it so he's pushing the pharmacare thing now and yesterday he put out this tweet just a second The Liberals have been promising pharmacare for 30 years. Our parents, grandparents, our children are paying the price for this broken promise. I've made it clear to Justin Trudeau and the Liberals the deadline for pharmacare legislation is March 1st. Canadians need action. All talk, no action. With Trudeau all in red, like he's some type of devil. Mm -hmm. Okay. First of all, all talk, no action. That's a little rich coming from the person who posted that. You think? <laughs> Uh, sir, if you don't like all talk, no action, you are what you loathe. Just, there's a lot of projection going on there. <laughs> all right. Number two, the liberals have been promising pharmacare for 30 years, but haven't delivered. I've made it clear to Justin Trudeau and the liberals, the deadline for pharmacare legislation is March 1st. Canadian needs action or else what? I don't know. All right. Because it's not like fundraising is going all that great for that party either. They only made only brought in about six between six and seven million in the last fundraising quarter. Liberals brought in sixteen something, and the Conservatives brought in thirty five. So uh, I don't think that they're wanting to go into an election just now. I don't think that they have the funds uh, to run a, a campaign, especially if he thinks he's going to you know stand up on first day and go, "I'm running to be Prime Minister of Canada," which is going to provoke everybody to you know, gales of laughter and snickers because we know that he's not running to be Prime Minister of Canada. I mean, in theory, he is, but we know he's not. Mm -hmm. So here's the thing. It's the Liberals have been promising primary care for 30 years because the Conservatives aren't promising it at all. And he's lying about the Liberals. He's drawing from the Conservative playbook all the time. And I just, part of me sitting here going like, why is this dude fighting so hard for pharmacare? Because at the same time, he's fighting so hard to make sure that the liberals are not the next government. It's not going to be him, which means it's going to be the conservatives, which is the party that's going to make sure that pharmacare doesn't happen, 
is going to gut the dental care program that he just worked so hard for mm -hmm. and gut the anti-scab legislation that he voted so hard for. And that brings me back to the NDP prior to Stephen Harper's majority election, where, yeah, they did get official opposition, but in order to get that, they sacrificed child care and Kelowna Accords. So the NDP says they believe in these programs and these policies, but they don't believe in the continuity of government that would allow these programs and policies to either pass in the course of Kelowna and child care the first time around, or get so ingrained into the public consciousness that they're hard to revoke afterwards. One of the smart things that President Obama did in the United States was pass his Affordable Care Act in the first two years of his mandate. Mm -hmm. Now, yes, he couldn't get anything done the next six years. But by winning that second term and letting him give an American six years to get used to it, the Republicans can't get rid of it now. No. Yeah. People like it. And the Republicans actually said that the first year. It was like, that's what we don't want people to get used to it. They might like it. Yeah. So that's what they feared. Yeah. Imagine that people imagine imagine that people don't like losing their house just because they delivered a baby. <laughs> yeah. Or, you know, had a catastrophic car accident or something to that effect. C committed the cardinal sin of being human and getting sick. Mm -hmm. Or getting old. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Right? Gee, people might like it. Well, if you either believe in the policies or you don't. It's one or the other. And if you believe in the policies, then you believe, if you're looking at the numbers and you say, I'm not going to win, then I'm at least going to support the party or not trash hard, too hard, the party that will make sure that this program that I fought so hard for will continue. But just like in the United States, where the Republicans actually agreed to this bill on immigration on the border, mm -hmm. and then Donald Trump came around and says, no, you can't pass that bill because I won't have an election issue to run on, and then destroyed all the work that they just did. Of course. This was the same thing with child care with the NDP. Yeah. Then Minister Dryden negotiated a deal. He had a deal in place with all 10 provinces. And they had the Colonial Accords ready. We would have been 10 years further down the road of reconciliation. Something also the NDP says they believe in. They're always, uh, they're always showing up to wrap themselves up in feathers. But they made decisions that delayed both of those. Mm -hmm. And during all the time in between, that the liberals brought them back and then get, get, they did get them passed this time. They campaigned on, liberals always promise it, but they never deliver it. Well, they did deliver it back then, but you guys prevented it from happening. And they've been never made to wear that. No, they, they just haven't. They broke everything and then they just moved on. He says he wants pharmacare, but he doesn't want a party in power that would actually maintain it if it passes. This is just wasted energy and effort. Why is he fighting so hard? Clearly he doesn't care about it. Because if you care about it, you're consistent. Mm -hmm. You want it to pass, and you want it to remain. You don't want it to just pass so that somebody could come around three months later and take it away. There's a lack of consistency from both conservatives and new Democrats between word and actions. Clearly. Which again, leaves us with just one party to vote for, which again, is not good for democracy. If you actually want an adult in the room, if you want change for the sake of change and you don't care what change you get, well then. But if you actually like childcare and if you actually like dental care and if you actually like the national child benefit, and actually think we should be doing something to address climate, and actually think that reconciliation is a good path, yeah. and like a government that will stand up for rights. This government did include transgender rights 
Mm -hmm. Well, everybody else has taken it. And they did that like seven years ago. Because they yeah. saw that this was coming. Yeah, the writing was on the wall, right? Yeah. So it was like, if you want a government that if a pandemic hits, will pass programs quickly to keep you whole, rather than taking two to three years to design a program to make sure that somebody who doesn't deserve it doesn't get it first. Yeah. Or a government, if we're looking at our premiers, and our premiers are the problem, a government that doesn't ask you as a business to float the government for seven months while they decide to, how they're going to get around to actually giving you money for your daycare center. Money that they already have in their bank accounts and color are collecting interest on, but are not just not passing forward to you yet. Because even though they've had all this time to prepare, they just didn't find you a priority enough to get it done in time for the program coming into place. That's a conservative government. That's the UCP in Alberta. They're asking private entrepreneurs to actually float the government six, seven months at a time mm -hmm. because they can't provide competent government or are unwilling. Unwilling, I think, is a better, a better term. Or wants to kill the program. But they can't say it because it's popular. So they'll just make it not work. I mean, these are our choices right now. We have, we have a federal gov government that is creating programs to try to make your life better. Because again, if we're ar arguing the counterfactual, for those of us who are receiving the climate rebate and are receiving child care money and are receiving the child benefit that was boosted that lifted so many kids out of poverty. Mm -hmm. If all of those programs disappear tomorrow, but we have the similar, similar inflation and similar interest rates, how better off are you? Well, if you think, if you think tough times are tougher now yeah. without those supports, Oh boy, are you in for a surprise? You? Yeah, you, you have one you party actively camp campaigning on, we do not believe in these programs. They said point blank, they don't believe in social programs. See, they, they didn't want CERB. They eventually supported it, like everybody did, because they realized, well, we have to do something. But they don't believe in these big social government programs. <sighs> At some point, we got to decide what we want. I, At some I point, to. I'm I'm tired of him. Is that a good enough reason to scuttle? Mm -hmm. Well, I'm tired of him. But if you don't have a better option, what choice do you have? Realistically, I mean, look, I, I get leader fatigue. I do. I, I really do. But. Please show me a viable alternative because there really isn't one. Because we know the Greens aren't going to form government unless yeah. everybody just says screw it and decides to vote for them. <laughs> right? Like right now, the people are hoping that the Liberals win. Mm -hmm. And have to hope that by the time the election comes along, that there's enough of these housing projects that have started. For people to see actually things being built that inflation does hit the bank of canada target and is there for a while hopefully a good solid year and that there's about a point to a point and a half if not more of interest rate decreases pretty much just to get the party into the game and then we've got to hope that the conservatives have some monumental screw up on something basic well, if the that can't be denied. hammering the hell out of him every time they ask him to answer a question and he chooses to answer it by saying, Justin Trudeau did something bad that I don't like, which is horseshit because no, that's no, you did it. You did it. Answer the question, Pierre. Answer the question, Pierre. 
Answer the question, Pierre. Which page? Yes or no? Yes or no? I know. I know it's exhausting. It it's really, exhausting. really is. It's completely exhausting. But until he doesn't, until he sees, until either his poll numbers go down, and even that, if I'm being consistent with stuff that I've said previously, I don't think will matter because I really, I really honestly don't think that the conservatives actually care whether or not they win or lose. No, I don't think they do, right? Now. They raised $35 million mm -hmm. in a quarter pulling this kind of crap. Yeah. They're very happy. They just because they're money. not spending, they're not, they're not spending all that money on providing a better option for you for governing, and they're not spending all that money trying to provide you with the opportunity to cast a more informed vote. Clearly, so well, just, they're uh, they're spending it on travel. Yeah, eighteen thousand dollars a day is what I think it's costing us to have Pierre Polyev. They're spending it on these video clips. They're spending it on, you know, exactly. Well, the government of Ontario spent ads you... during the Super Bowl. They had ads during the Super Bowl that we paid for. Yeah. To say, we're getting it done. No, you're not, Doug. You're robbing us blind. You're giving $650 million to a private corporation. Indeed. All right. A little bit of news from stateside, Mr. Grizzly. Hmm. There was a special election in New York. Well, wow, that's a big flip. To replace George Santos. And he was replaced. He was replaced, and everybody thought that the Republican might still win this somehow. Mm -hmm. but with 87% of the vote in, uh, according, uh, I think this was, I'm not sure if this was New York Times. Can't remember off the top of my head, sorry. Um, yes, it seems that it has flipped to uh, Thomas Suozzi from uh, the Democratic Party which uh, makes the Republican majority in the House one vote thinner than it already mm -hmm. was. And uh, there it's uh, becoming very clear. And in, in the states that are a little ahead of us, the um, people are starting to realize that uh, Republicans can't govern. Yeah, clearly. Like, uh, particularly in the House, and that's starting to turn people's opinions. It's starting to turn people's opinions. But in Canada, because we don't have two chambers the way that the United States does, where motions have to pass both in the way that they do, something passes the Senate, something passes the House, and then there's some type of reconciliation thing and then passes, right, between the two versions. Um, because our Senate is sober second thought and provides royal assent. Yes. What the conservatives do in Canada, conservatives often get a free pass. Right? The government must be held accountable, not the conservative, not the opposition. The opposition doesn't have any power. Yes, but the opposition is campaigning to be the party that will have the power to give the contracts or whatnot. So how they behave in opposition does matter. So a lot of people in Canada think, well, they don't need to be held, to held, held as accountable as the government because they're not issuing the contracts. They're not making the decisions. Whatnot. They're, they're, they're only the opposition. Yes, but they're also trying to sell themselves as a government in waiting. Indeed. So yes, they, they need to be able to offer, and we should be expecting equal accountability for how they do their job as opposition. And in Canada, there is no tradition of that. Most of our opposition is, comes in the form of premiers. And until more and more people, it's starting, but more and more people start making the case that the premiers are the problem, which I think it was Kit Cassie made the comment in the chat a couple of, a couple of days ago when we were showing uh, the tightening of pools in Saskatchewan, saying in Saskatchewan it's healthcare. It's the dis dismal healthcare record, mm -hmm. the government that's tightening stuff up. So maybe it's the federal government, or federal liberals should be all over the place and saying, you know, talking about how terrible your healthcare is and how terrible how your childcare services are not being delivered. And how their disability supports might might be clawed back, and keep it on pointing the fingers at the premiers, at the mainly conservative premiers, which might prompt the journalists to start asking the federal conservatives, 
why are they not denouncing their colleagues? Indeed. That might be the path. Could very well be. <sighs> I don't know. Mr. Chrisley, how are we doing for time? Got to wrap it up, sir. All right. Kits and Cubs. Uh, there's more stuff. Uh, there's Bill 124, which uh, Ford lost in Ontario, and mm -hmm. we'll try to get to that uh, that stuff in uh, other show this week. Um, but yeah, that's going to um, cost us a lot of money. Oh yeah, and it already has cost us a lot yeah. of money actually because there were some decisions in the meantime mm -hmm. that said that there were some payments that needed to go back, which cost us already nine billion dollars, and this is going to cost us more. But yeah, well, uh, fiscal conservatives. Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> I got Just pay people what they're supposed to get paid, and then yeah. we won't, you know, then you don't. Instead, we have to take you to court to sue you, which costs us money because we're paying for both sets of lawyers. Yep. The lawyers get rich. The politicians get to drag this out. And we get screwed. Yep. So, and then there's been a big decision on indigenous welfare, children, child welfare, and stuff like that. So hopefully we'll be able to get to that in other shows. But once again, we had to show this. I'm not sure how much longer we're going to keep on showing clips of him being petulant. Yeah. It's, it's, unless it's, there's it's, something major yeah. going on, because clearly he's committed to the bit and uh, he's not going to change that. So unless uh, somebody comes up with a new strategy or actually nails him at some point really good. Um, not sure we're going to keep on doing that because of just being outraged that he's not participating. Um, he's got a long record of not participating, right? I mean, they cheated in the 2006 election. They mm -hmm. pleaded guilty in court to it. He's got a compliance order with Elections Canada because he was told not to wear that T-shirt and wanted to wear it anyway. Yeah. So this guy's just going to do what he wants to do anyway. He's got a long, clear, established pattern. So unless something else happens, we probably won't be bringing you more of this stuff. Um, because it's not particularly effective and this is not the path. Um, but, um, yeah, we need, uh, we need something else. We hope that you love listening to us because we love making this for you. Sharing is caring. So please tell your peeps and poops all about us. And if you'd like to make sure that you get every single one of our episodes, you do not have to miss one. Thanks to the Ray girl. The QR code under our my chin here brings you to our pod page. That's podpage.com slash the true north eager beaver lowercase letters with a hyphen between each one of those words. And when we have something fresh off the bandwidth, if you subscribe there, we'll deliver it right to you when it is ready. If you would like to support us in other ways, you can make like Kit Ellen. Sorry, Kit Elaine, not Kit Ellen. What am I talking about? I Kit know. Elaine. And uh, something popped up on my screen that distracted me there. Oh, <laughs> I did that. Uh, and go to our True North Eager Beaver Media Incorporated YouTube page. Click like, share, and subscribe. We appreciate that very much. And if you'd like to help us in other ways, then uh, the QR code by Mr. Grizzly's head brings us, or brings you, I should say, to the Eager Beaver Lodge Emergency Hydration Fund, where you can make a little contribution there and make sure that we remain moist so that we can keep delivering <laughs> our special brand of analysis and commentary to you on a daily basis five days a week oh remember God. that if you want to watch our pubcast uh, you do have to go to our youtube page because that's exclusively there so again uh the true north eager beaver media incorporated youtube page if you would like to support us in other ways please know that we love to hear from you so our email address is truenortheagerbeaver at gmail.com. Send us something if you'd like to interact with us. We really appreciate that. And if you're listening to us on Apple Podcasts, please leave us some stars and some reviews. That always helps us out a lot. Um, because democracy is something that you do, make sure that you sign the Hamilton Helps petition to make sure that uh, we open the armories to keep people warm during winter. That's a very good citizen initiative that should be supported. Absolutely. And please do write your uh, local press outlets and uh, ask them, tell, tell them they need to be sharper with their questions. And don't you let like them. that they're going after him. Give them some encouragement. You like that they're going after them. You approve of it. But you know, 
They need to be more prosecutorial style with their questions. Mm. They've got to stop assuming good faith. No, there's no good faith from here. There's no good faith there. From the Beaver Lodge, this is your eager beaver saying, it could be a tough world out there, so please be kind to and gentle with yourself. And because it's Valentine's Day, spread some love. Not only to the person that's special in your life, or the people that are special in your life, but as Mr. Grizzly often says, if you're on the street, smile at some people. Mm -hmm. Send out some love. Right? Let's make this world a little bit of a better place today. Mr. Grizzly, do you have some words of wisdom? Drink the coffee. Enjoy the whiskey. Settle in. We got a rough ride ahead of us, kids. Right. Ooh, and Kit Leanne tells us that uh, Kit Angela, or Jordan's mom, will be on the O Show tomorrow. Oh, excellent. Outstanding. Oh, to check that out then. wonderful. That's wonderful. Oh, God. Best wishes. All the good vibes for a really, really good session. Laura's great. Yeah, she's love awesome. Her. Yeah, she's awesome. All right, Mr. Grizzly, please roll the credits. You are listening to a True North Eager Beaver Media Incorporated podcast. The True North Eager Beaver podcasts are proudly brought to you by our founding sponsors, the Misfee Mysteries from Corvid Moon Publishing, your source for science fiction, fantasy, and cozy mysteries featuring a broad diversity of characters, CanadianTarot.com, your uniquely Canadian online eclectic tarot community, and the Peppermaster, hot pepper sauces made from farm fresh ingredients to thrill your taste buds and expand your mind. We are grateful to the Cryer Media Network for its support, Pete Jarvis for our artwork, and Paul Joseph Something for our opening and closing sequence music. And some good news today for you in the Easter egg. Given it's the day of love, Valentine's Day, it's the perfect day for the release of the Bob Marley biopic. One oh, it's, up. yeah, that's right. It's released today. Yeah. Comes out today. Uh, some love for our athletes. Molly Carlson at the World Aquatics Championship picked up a silver in the women's 20-meter high diving event. I follow her on TikTok. Ugh, that scares me. She's Ingrid crazy, Bill, I know. Ingrid Vilm got a bronze in the women's 100-meter backstroke. Jessica McCauley got the bronze in the women's 20 meter high deer diving. So two medals for Canada in that event. I believe they also finished second and third at the world, uh, at, um, the world aquatics. Well, this is the world aquatics. Oh, that was another cool. event that we were talking about. Maybe, maybe has it already been a year? I Jeez. Don't know, man. Cause I remember them going two, three as well in a, in a Might have been. recently that we talked mm. about. Um, Time so flies. yep. And our short track speed skaters, came back with six medals from their stop in Dresden. William Dangidu earned his third 1,500 meter victory of the season. In the men's 1,000, Felix Roussel and Stephen Dubois shared the podium with a silver and bronze. Uh, then Roussel had another gold medal in with a victory in the 500 meters for his first World Cup win. And he was joined on that podium with Jordan Pierre Gilles, who took silver for his fourth medal of the season. And the medal hall was rounded out by silver from the women's 3,000 meter relay team consisting of Danae Blais, Kim Boutin, Claudia Gagnon, and Courtney Sarrault. So congratulations to our Canadians who are making us proud. Everyone spread some love. Eat the chocolate. Give some roses. Have a cuddle. And, and here's a, a, an idea for a game show that I showed you on Saturday after we had finished the podcast. I'm going to put this on the screen and I'll read it out for you. Game show idea. 11 gay men and one straight man are locked in a house. The object for the gay man is to find out who isn't gay. Once a week, someone gets outvoted until two are left or the straight man is out. If the gays manage to outvote him, they win $1 million. If the straight man is among the two last people in the house in the end, he wins $1 million. Now, here's the twist. None of the men are actually gay. They just all think they're the one straight man. I think that would be a great show. <laughs> oh, that would be funny. It turns out that the only gay person on the show is the host. Yeah. yeah. But I'm... <laughs> All right. I got to get to work. I'll see you. Bye.